Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you what is in my opinion the easiest and best way to interact with your machine's command line interface or CLI through C Sharp. What Microsoft has in .NET is horrible and so developer unfriendly and what we're going to see now improves on basically every aspect of that and it adds some very nice goodies that you can actually get inspired from and use in your own code even if you don't use the library we're going to take a look at today. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsters.com. So let me show you what I have here. I have this empty application. It's a console application. We're going to use that to demonstrate everything about this package. Now, let's talk about the hypothetical. Let's say you want to run integration tests or end-to-end -end tests, and you need to do .NET publish on a project to run it or .NET run C release, but through your tests or through your C sharp code effectively. Or maybe you want to spin up a database in Azure or AWS and you want to interact with their Azure CLI or the AWS CLI. Maybe you want to spin up a Docker container. You want to do a Docker run of something, all that through C sharp. To do that currently, you have to use the process class that can be found under system.diagnostics. Now, if you ever needed to interact with this class and all of these properties, you know how much of a mess this thing is. This is very, very, very hard to work with. And even though it's extremely flexible and it supports everything we're going to see in this video, technically, the API for it and the interface is just bad. To improve on all that, we're going to use a package called CLI Wrap. Now, CLI Wrap is made by Alexei Holub, and I'm going to put a link in the description. If at any point you think that this package is cool and you like it, go ahead and give it a star on GitHub. It really means a lot to people like Alexei who spend a lot of time building these things for free for us. So let's talk about the Docker hypothetical. I have my Docker desktop running on my machine and I want to run a Postgres container because Postgres is a database I like. To do that, first I'm going to install CLI wrap over here. So it's this package over here. I'm going to go ahead and install it. And then all I need to do is say await. So yes, it is an awaitable interface. CLI.wrap. So it reads nicely. And then we want to wrap the main command we want to run. So in this case, it is the Docker command that is installed on my PC. And then I want to run this with arguments. So we have this nice, as you can see over here, fluent API where you can say with some stuff, and you can pass down things like validation, environment variables, working directory. You can change all that in C Sharp. Really, really cool. And in this case, we want to say with arguments. And the arguments are these. It's docker run with a detach argument. And then we're going to pass down an environment variable, which is the Postgres password. And in this case, the password will be Nick. And then Postgres is the container name. So what we actually are going to run. And then to run this, all I need to say is execute async. And that's it. And now the moment I run this, I'm going to go to Docker and you can see that it's pulling that container and it's running it. Now the application exited because all I said is run this command to have Docker running and the container is running and that's it. And I'm going to go ahead and stop and delete things as I go because I want to keep your focus on the latest thing we're building. But now just like that, I was able to control Docker and run a container. However, I didn't get any feedback in my application. All I got is just empty execution text and, and that's it. The reason why this happened is because this basic execution actually starts the task over here with null streams on output and error. So it doesn't actually capture anything about what the command line output would be. To change that, what we can do is say execute buffered async. And the moment we do that, this will now start capturing in an in-memory buffer those messages. If I want to print them in the console, what I can say is with output pipe, and we're going to talk about the piping mechanism here, but I can pass down a pipe target and I can say pipe it to a delegate and the delegate is the console.writeLine method. And now if I go ahead and I run this, as the application is running, I'm getting what you see here, which is a Docker container hash generated for the container that was just created it is here. Now, if you try to do this a traditional way, then you would know that passing down these arguments and making sure they're escaped properly, especially when it comes down to Windows paths, if you want to point to a file or even the password. If I go ahead and say that the password is Nick Chapsas and I try to run this, this will actually throw an exception. It will say that, hey, we're trying to run container chapsus because it doesn't understand the concept of Nick chapsus being a password with a space. 
to fix that, I would have to go ahead and sort of escape things here. And if I do that, then this would work. But you'd have to go ahead and do this everywhere. Just to show you that this actually works. If I go to inspect, you can actually see that the name was properly passed. But if I actually extract that into a parameter and I say var password over here is Nick Chapsus, then I kind of have to escape the parameter, which technically will work, but I have to deal with this everywhere. CLI wrap addresses this issue in a few ways. Now, the first one is to remove the width parameters as a single string and pass it down as a broken down array. So run with arguments, run, detach, E, and so on and so forth. And this now doesn't need to be escaped. If I run this, this will work absolutely fine. And if I go over here, you will see that it will be auto escape without me needing to do anything, which is awesome. But this is not your only option. You can actually go ahead and replace this with an arguments delegate and chain those ads over here. And this will still be automatically escaped. So right out of the get go, we have such a nicer experience than anything that this old process way could do. Now, what I want to do is show you something very interesting. I'm going to remove the detach aspect of this and the standard output aspect of this. I'm going to completely remove those and let's just remove them from here as well. And I'm going to remove the execute buffer async. And I'm going to show you that you can actually have that command be a variable that you can pass down and further do changes on. This is a command class. And why that's important? Well, because you can do things like this. You can say, I'll wait for each and listen to the command events. So I'll wait for each in cmd dot listen async. And what this allows me to do is pull for things on the command line as are happening for events. So for example, you can have a switch on that event, which is if we go over here, as you can see, an abstract class that implements exited, started, standard output and standard error. And we can switch on each of those items. So on a started command event, you might want to say process started with process ID and pass down the process ID. On standard output, you might want to print something with white color in the command line. When you have an error, you might want to go with red and print that with an error prefix as well. And then when you exit, you might want to print the exit code as the application is exiting. So if I do the exact same thing now without detaching, I'm going to go ahead and run this. And as you can see, container is started, but I'm getting all of this text, as you can see, which is what the CLI would have if I run a non-detached container, a Postgres container. I have some warnings over here. I have some information, standard output over here. And then when I say stop, then I'm getting an exit code zero. The application has shut down and also my application has exited because it finished execution. So that's very neat, but it's not my preferred way of dealing with this. In my opinion, what you should do is use the incredible piping mechanism that has been implemented here. And this is where things will get a bit trippy. But before that, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, the ABP.io framework. The ABP framework is an open source platform that you can use to create modern web applications following the latest best practices and conventions of software development. It supports multiple architectures from microservices to modular systems and from domain-driven design to multi-tenant applications. It provides ready solutions for problems such as authentication and authorization, and you can either use the Getting Started Web Wizard or the ABP CLI tool to create .NET projects exactly how you want them. They also provide commercial solutions with access to extra modules, themes, and templates alongside premium support for enterprise users. It is a complete package that solves most of the problems you will encounter while building a system out of the box. To find out more about ABP, check the link in the description and stay tuned in the last week of November for a massive Black Friday discount on ABP commercial licenses. All right, so let's get weird now. What I'm going to do is remove this and simply await it again again, and I'm going to add this execute async method back in. But now to capture that result, I'm going to add pipes and I'm going to use the standard output pipe and the standard error pipe that I can use. So I can say things like pipe target and use different stuff like two files. So pipe the result into a file to a stream to a string builder if I want to. So I can say var standard output string builder and pass it down over here. And I can do the same with the error as well. So error pipe, and I can say to string builder and pass the string builder over here. And then in the end say console.writeline to string on the standard output 
and two string on the error. But obviously this will only work if the application runs detached, because if not, it will still be running over here and never go over this execute async. So if I do that now, we're going to see, as you can see here, the hash of the container printed. And that's a way to get the feedback in the end. But since we have this to delegate method, we can also get the feedback as it happens. So I can configure both of them to now use console.writeline. And if I remove the detached part and I just run this as it is, then as you can see, I'm getting the same experience as before with the polling. And if I go and I stop the container, then you see that the system is shutting down. Everything happens in real time. Now, here's where things will get pretty weird. I'm going to remove that and get a command over here, the same way I did before. And I'm going to remove the standard output pipes as well. And I'm just going to stop this here and say await the command.execute async method. And that's it. Now, I can still have that same piping logic by using the pipe operator. So I can say handle this using the console write line delegate. And that's it. This will work. And if I want to have the same standard error output experience and I want to separate the two I can have the standard output one and standard error here and if I run this this works what the hell so this is super cool obviously I'm very skeptical about it because it doesn't look like C sharp and you have to be in the know to understand that Alexei went ahead and he overloaded the uh, pipe operator to give this experience and obviously here he's using the two delegate behind the scenes to handle this it reads very nicely, but I'm very skeptical about it. And of course, you don't have to stick with a right line. It just happens to be the one that Alexei is using, but you can pass down anything you want for your use case. For example, things like GitHub Actions, when they show you what happens to your build as it's running, could be using something like this to capture the output and then display it in real time as it happens. That's how you do that. Now, something very cool about this is you can actually pass down a cancellation token on the execute async method and cancel things. So for example, in this case, we're trying to ping Google and if you have the T parameter, we'll do it indefinitely. But in this case, we have a cancellation token source that has a time span of six seconds. So if I go ahead and I run this command line application, you can say that we'll do it for six times and then exit because of the cancellation. And that's it. So one, two, three, all the way to six, just because it's once per second. Very, very cool. Very, very interesting. But I want to leave you with what I think is one of the coolest things you can do with this thing. Let's say we have a video that we want to convert to a different type. And we're going to use FFmpeg to convert it from one type to another. This is a utility, a CLI tool that can do that. What we can do is define our command and we can say, pipe source from file. So we're going to load a file in this case, let's say a video MP4, and we can pipe that stream into CLI wrap and the command will be FFmpeg here. And we can add our arguments and convert that into a WebM video and capture the output as well. And then all we need to do for this to run is await the execute async method. And that's it. I don't know if you understand what's happening here. We're loading what is a pipe source over here, which can be piped into as a stream, the CLI wrap and can be used as a parameter, as an input stream, basically an input source, and then used in the command to be treated in some certain way. In this case, converted into a video. This is really, really, really cool. Of course, you can do the exact same thing without using this piping mechanism. You can actually just remove that and say with input pipe and you can pass down the pipe like that. It's the same thing. But the previous approach, if you're in the know, looks very, very nice. Of course, I'm very skeptical about it because the syntax looks off for C Sharp developers. But as someone who's a fan of cursed C Sharp, I would probably use that. And what's super cool about this, I'm going to leave this video with that, is that you can do process to process piping. So you can start with one command, have some output, and then pipe that into another command and do something with it, which is nuts. <laughs> Again, this is a very handy tool when you're working with your CLI and you want to interact with it. It is cross-platform, even though some few minor things are Windows only that you probably will not encounter, but documentation is great. I highly recommend you give it a star on GitHub. It is an amazing library. And I'm such a fan. It's something I'm actually using myself. So I'm super happy to make a video about it now. But what do you think? Have you felt the pain of using the process class? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. First, and thanks to my Patreons for making this possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. 
Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.